Good morning, students. This is a video on uh, the CS Foundation uh, entrepreneurship uh, subject. As you all know, uh, this subject is very important. This will uh, easily give you some good marks. And the chapters are also very easy and questions are also straightforward. So let us go through some 20 MCQs on uh, the entrepreneurship syllabus. Let's try to discuss the answers and uh, prepare ourselves for the examination which is going to happen tomorrow and day after. Now the first question is, an individual driven by his passion and does something new and offers it for exchange, who is he? Is he a leader? No, he is not a leader. Is he a manager? No. So a person who does something out of his passion and offers something new is an entrepreneur. So the answer for this question is entrepreneur. Let's move on to the next question. A person with a large corporation who takes direct responsibility for turning an idea into profitable fixed product to, through assertive risk taking and innovation is see he is working for a large corporation so he is not an entrepreneur but he is doing something which is more than what a manager does so he is not a manager he is not heading or leading the organization so he is not the CEO the answer for this is an entre entrepreneur right Third question, this type of entrepreneur is uh, led by charisma, charm and high energy. So who is he? An analyst is somebody who depends on uh, facts and figures and stats. So it is not analyst. He's not, he's not talking about a long term vision. He's not talking about uh, changing the industry or the economy as a whole. So he's not visionary. Advisors are those people who give detailed advice to the customers. They're highly customer centric. So it is not advisor also. So the only option left for us is a superstar. Superstars are people who run their organization basically uh, base, based on their charisma, charm and high energy level. The fourth question is entrepreneurship does not help in which of the following helps in doing what you love the most. Absolutely right. Then an entrepreneur is generally independent. That is also right. It helps in giving recognition and self-fulfillment. So this is also provided by entrepreneurship. Business trips. Entrepreneurship may or may not provide business trips. And it is not one of the uh, most important things that we see uh, uh, when we are talking about what exactly entrepreneurship gives. So the answer for this question would be business trips. Question number five. Which of the following are the key elements of entrepreneurship? An entrepreneur has to be uh, innovative. So there is no uh, choice when it comes to that. So he has to be innovative. It's an element of entrepreneurship. Risk taking entrepreneurship definitely comes with a lot of risk. He should have a vision. So all three answers are right. So the answer for this question is all of the above. Question number six. The process that combines ideas and knowledge into new value is called uh, creating new ideas definitely is creativity incubation is to develop that idea and give it a shape and it cannot be none of the above so the answer that is remaining for us is innovation innovation is something where you combine your ideas and knowledge and come out with something that is new something that is innovative so this is the most correct answer and not creativity and incubation seventh question the term dash refers to the screening of large amounts of information in order to detect, detect emerging trends and to create a set of scenarios. Uh, market survey also does something like this, but it might not consider large amounts of data. Research is a very broad term, so it doesn't go well with this. So the right answer for this question would be environmental scanning, where we screen large amounts of information and detect the emerging trends. What might happen in the uh, whole marketplace is detected through this process and the answer for this is environmental scanning. Question number eight, SWOT matrix. SWOT, as we all know, stands for strength, weakness, opportunity and threat. SWOT matrix is sometimes also called analytical matrix. No, it is not called analytical matrix. Internal external matrix. Yes, this is the answer because if you look at SWOT we have to understand that here strength and weakness are internal to an organization, whereas opportunity and threat are external to an organization. So here we tell that it is also called internal and external uh, analysis. Sometimes it is also called IE analysis. 
IE stands for again internal and external analysis. Question number nine. Which analysis gives big picture of the environment? Big picture is the complete picture. SWOT may not give. BCG will definitely not give. So the answer is PESTEL. The expansion of PESTEL, you may be aware of this. It is political, economical, social, technological, legal and environmental. So when we assess all these things, it is pretty clear that it gives the full picture or the complete picture of the environment. So the answer for this question is PESTEL analysis. Question number 10. Best tool to analyze whether new products, services or businesses have potential to be profitable, which is the best uh, you know, process or best tool to find it out. BCG generally talks about one company or one product. G9 cell product talks about uh, uh, the position of a company in a given industry. Pestel is generally, generally to understand the entire uh, environment in which the company is operating. So the answer for this question is uh, Porter's Five Force Theory. If you all know, Porter's Five Force Theory will deal with uh, substitute products, bargaining power of the buyers, bargaining power of the uh, sellers. It also talks about uh, the new entrants that come into the market. So this is called the Porter's Five Force Theory and the answer for this is Porter's Five Force Theory. Right. Uh, when an individual is forced to choose entrepreneurship, it is called. See, understand the word here. He is, he is being forced. It means that he has no option and he has to become an entrepreneur. So what sort of uh, entrepreneurship is this? Is it opportunity based? No. Is it passion based? Definitely not. Is it compulsion? There is a good chance of this being compulsion. Is there a better word? It, it is necessity based. So the answer for this is necessity based entrepreneurship is generally forced entrepreneurship. Question number 10, 12. Identify the challenges before an entrepreneur. No rules to protect the employer. We always talk about labor laws, but we don't talk about uh, uh, laws which protect the employer. Global competition. The businesses are going global today. So it is obvious that there will be huge competition from uh, across the world. Delayed payments. There is no control uh, from the entrepreneur side when it comes to receiving the payments. So the answer for this question is all of the above. All these are the challenges an entrepreneur would face in his life as an entrepreneur. The introduction of a new product or service to meet the need of an old market is generally referred to as. So new product is being introduced or a service is being introduced to meet the needs of an existing market. So market is already there, but the there are new needs and those new needs are to be met or the needs which are existing in the market is being met by a new product. So what is this? The straightforward question, the answer for this is diversification. Diversification is an existing company will come out with a product which will try to satisfy a need which is not uh, satisfied by other products in the market. So this uh, question, the answer for this is diversification. Question number 14. A dash plan is a document that summarizes the operational, uh, this word is important here, operational and financial objectives of a business and contains detailed plans and objectives showing how the objectives are to be realized. So what sort of lean canvas? No, it is not the answer. Proposal? No. Tender? Definitely not. So the answer is business plan. Business plan is a document which summarizes the operational and financial objectives of the company. Question number 15. What does BPO stand for? This is again a very straightforward uh, question. Answer for this is option A, that is business process outsourcing. Question number 16. B2B, B2C, C2B are types of. Let's understand what is B here. B is business and C is the customer. So B2B means business to business. B2C means business to consumer. So where does it come? It comes in the uh, process of marketing. So the answer for this is marketing. That is option C. SCM stands for. Uh, SCM is again a very straightforward question. The answer for this is supply chain management. If such questions are asked in the examination, it's a big uh, lottery for anybody. These are very well known uh, expansions. SCM stands for supply chain management. Question number 18. Financial management comprises of financial decision, yes. Investment decision, definitely. Dividend decision, obviously. So all these three are a part of financial management. So the answer for this would be option D, that is all of the above. Right, let's move to the next question, that is question number 19. 
company has dash succession. This comes in uh, the joint stock company part. Uh, longer succession, it's right. Continued succession, okay. Limited succession, no. The right word, the technical word for this is perpetual succession. Perpetual succession means something which goes on for a very long period of time without interruption. Last question in this series would be, which of the following would have unlimited liability? Uh, you should be aware that cooperative society comes with limited liability, that the, the, the member is responsible only for the capital he has brought in or the idea or the service that he's bringing in. A company, a joint stock company is also something which uh, limits the liability of the customer only to the amount of uh, money that is brought into the company. Shareholders uh, doesn't go with the question at all. Uh, so the first three are not the answers. The remaining is the sole proprietor. A sole proprietorship is where there is unlimited liability. There is no difference between the person's assets and the business assets. So the answer for this is sole proprietorship. I hope uh, this series has helped you to understand a uh, little more about entrepreneurship and uh, this has helped you to solve 20-odd uh, questions. Uh, we wish you all the best for your examination. Thank you so much.